Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Kipron KS900 Lite from Decathlon. The Kipron KS900 Lite is the new top of the range cushioned running shoe from Decathlon, replacing the previous version, the KS900. As you'd expect from the name, the main changes made to the shoe have been to make it a little bit lighter. Decathlon says 10% lighter. I haven't tested the previous version of the shoe, so I can't comment on that, but overall it's a pretty lightweight shoe. It weighs 281 grams or 9.9 .9 ounces in a UK 9.5, which is what I have here. It's Good value, as you'd expect from Decathlon. It costs 90 pounds in the UK and 100 euros in Europe. It's not available in the US at the moment, but in Canada, it's 115 Canadian dollars. Uh, it has a drop of eight millimeters and Decathlon doesn't give the stack height, but by crude measurement I've done, it looks around 30 millimeters at the heel, something like that. So not a massively high stack shoe. It's got a fairly traditional design in lots of ways, this shoe. A lot of that comes down to the midsole, which is an EVA midsole called M Foam Cushioning. It is a very soft EVA foam, I will say that. Softer than I expected uh, before I started running in it. It's got a fairly traditional shape, no big aggressive rocker on the shoe or anything too fancy in there, like dual density foams or plates or anything like that. It's got a pretty standard mesh upper as well with some nice cushioning around the heel and on the tongue. It's got quite a snug fit at the back there to offer good support at the heel and then a nice roomy toe box. And then on the outsole, you've got pretty good rubber coverage and it's quite a thick layer of it on the shoe as well. The Decathlon say the grip is inspired by a, a car tires tread, so it does very well in the wet and it has done well in the wet. It's one for the road though. It doesn't have any kind of little lugs or anything like that for the trails. And like the other shoes in the Kip Run range, the Decathlon has gone big on promises of durability, saying the shoe will last a thousand K of running. Can't comment on that, I haven't done a thousand K, but I certainly does feel like a shoe that is built to last. So I've been running in a UK 9.5 in the uh, KS900 Lite, which is a EU 44. It's half a size up uh, on my normal running shoe size in the UK sizing, and it has been a little bit long in the toe box, nothing too dramatic. I think going true to size would be the way to go. It's got quite a spacious toe box, I'd say. It's a very comfortable shoe around. The step-in comfort is um, really impressive. This padded you know, heel tab here and the way you slip in against the tongue does feel really comfortable. I pulled the shoe on actually after a couple of races just randomly and you know, stepping out of carbon plate shoes into this was very, very enjoyable indeed. So yeah, I think you probably should go true to size. I've got half a size up here though and it hasn't been a big problem, but I've probably just got a little bit too much length in the toe box. So I've run 50k in the KS900 Lite. Uh, that's been across quite a lot of runs. I've done quite a lot of short, easy runs in this in the build-up before and the days after a marathon. I've also done a couple of runs over 10k in it, including one uh, progression run. Started at an easy pace. This was actually at the uh, Decathlon launch event where we started off a very easy first half jogging out to the Eiffel Tower and on the way back, uh, Paul Shalimo kept picking up the pace and we finished at around, uh, I think, like 325 a k pace, dodging traffic in Paris. So have done one good progression run in it and some other slightly faster bits and some strides but mostly what I've done in it is quite uh, is relaxed easy running I think what the shoe is mainly built for that general daily training where you're you know, mooching along fairly relaxed pace want a bit of cushioning underfoot I expected the shoe to have a little bit of a break-in period and that hasn't really been the case it's felt very soft and comfortable from the off like you hear EVA foam it's not a very exciting looking shoe in terms of geometry and all that but actually it is very comfortable at the heel in particular this extended heel bit here and the way you land and roll through as a heel striker I have found it very comfortable at the heel and really enjoyed using it for those uh, just relaxed easy runs like I've used it for my two runs since the London Marathon and you know, I'm very tired legs and it's been really comfortable protective it's pretty stable I'm not 100% convinced on stability because I do think it narrows a bit at the midfoot and I worry about rolling a bit there if you do have over pronation issues but I found it you know, perfectly stable as a neutral runner it's got a nice wide base at the forefoot in particular so yeah overall I'd say it's certainly not an unstable shoe but there's not massive stability elements there like a big heel clip or anything like that in the shoe it's not the most exciting ride in the world it's got a you know like I say quite a soft foam it doesn't give you an awful lot back and it doesn't really have a very smooth transition it's quite a snappy transition as a heel striker onto this forefoot and that has meant if I when I do a bit, run a bit faster in the shoe I get a lot of snap through onto a forefoot that doesn't have a massive high stack at all. So can get a little bit of forefoot discomfort. I wouldn't mind seeing that forefoot uh, cushioning raised up a bit and increasing the cushioning on the shoe in general, but trade off of that would be weight. And this is quite a lightweight shoe and that does help with versatility. Really enjoyed doing strides in the shoe and it was fine for that progression run out in Paris. In general, I think this is a shoe that can handle your daily training. I just think there are probably others 
that I find a bit more versatile at the speedy end of things. This, this veers a bit more towards the comfortable end, as you'd expect. There are a few kind of cushion daily trainers that I think handle speed work a little bit better than this, but overall it's not a bad shoe for versatility. It's just not the most lively ride. You're not getting a lot uh, back from the foam, especially when you're toe off. There's not a big response there or anything like that. It's mainly there as a protective layer of foam rather than something that's delivering you know, really lively, dynamic ride. Uh, the shoe has gripped really well on the road. Uh, I say like on some pretty wet runs on the roads, the I've had no concerns at all with outsole grip. Like I say, it's a shoe that is built for the rose. Today I uh, veered into my local forest because I thought it'd be quite dry in there and I was wrong and there was just some slick sections and it doesn't really have great purchase there. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's not bad grip and I do think this outsole is going to be nice and durable. Interesting actually today on that same run I was running with a mate who was wearing the original Puma Velocity Nitro, which does have a very good outsole that grips well <laughs> on light trails. Um, it actually comes at a similar price. We're going to talk more about that in the verdicts. But overall, I certainly have enjoyed running in the Kipra and KS900 Lite. I think it's stands up very well to other cushion daily trainers in this category and it's coming in a fair bit cheaper than most of them it's got a softer ride than expected and it is reasonably versatile mostly down to the fact it's quite a light shoe rather than any particularly impressive effects from the geometry or foam in the midsole So this is a solid running shoe from uh, Decathlon. I think if you pick this up and used it for your daily training, you're gonna be pretty happy with it. It's quite a soft shoe, especially if you're a heel striker, you get a nice soft landing. I think it could use a bit more comfort under the forefoot and maybe some tweaks to the foam or geometry to give it a little bit more punch if you were using it as a you know an all-rounder to do your fast training in as well. But as a cushioned option, it's a solid one for sure. The price is an interesting one because it is obviously good value. Like 90 quid these days is quite a good price for a running shoe, especially one with such big promises on durability. At the same time, there are a few other shoes around this price that I think are probably slightly more exciting or just slightly more impressive all round. And big one that stands out is the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, which is £100 in the UK, so it's £10 more, but it's always in sales somewhere and it's only £10 more. And I think you are getting a better shoe for that price. You just get that livelier dual density midsole that has a bit more pop if you want to try and run fast, but it's equally soft and cushioned for easy runs. You've got a really good outsole on that shoe. It's also a pretty durable one and the upper is nice and comfortable as well. So I think just across the board, I would favour the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 for a little bit more money or a little bit less if you can get it in sales and there's also the Reebok Float Ride Energy 5 which I've been testing at the same time as this now Float Ride Energy 5 I think is a less enjoyable shoe for easy run so far in my testing it's got a slightly uh, firmer ride it's the grip is slightly less good I think on wet pavements at the same time I do, do think it has a bit more pop for fast running and it's a little bit lighter as well and that's actually a little bit cheaper than the Decathlon shoe it's 85 pounds and, and, and available in the US uh, I think for 110 dollars so there's a couple of really good competitors there. I would buy the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 myself if you're looking around this price area. And then if you're looking for a more of a versatile daily trainer, I think the Reebok maybe offers that. I do prefer this as a cushion shoe to the Reebok shoe though. If you're just using it for relaxed daily runs, then I would go for the uh, KS900 Lite myself. It's also the Nike Pegasus range, which obviously is not much over hundred pounds. It's another very good, durable, comfortable daily trainer. And I think the KS900 Lite holds its own against all these shoes, which is obviously great for uh, the Kipron brand. I think this is a very solid, cushion shoe it just feels like a little bit of a throwback in some ways with the quite simple design EVA midsole but there's nothing really wrong with that it's still a good running shoe all the shoes that used to do this all the time were a good running shoe and I did find this midsole surprisingly soft and comfortable so I think you can pick it up it's a good shoe uh, I don't think it's absolutely standing out at its price though you know and as the Catalan tries to move more and more into running shoes and bring people over to the Kipron brand that's one thing that's constantly going to be one of the big selling points is that they do offer very good value for money. This is good value for money, but I don't think it's necessarily outstanding value for money because there are shoes that I rate slightly higher than it for a very similar price um, or even less. But that's our review of the Kipran KS900 Lite, a solid shoe from the Decathlon. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. By the way, Kipran is for keep on running. This actually says that on the shoe here. It's uh, not to do with Elliot Kipchoge. That's a happy coincidence. Um, anyway, let us know what you think of the shoe uh, in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.